This is Cybert signing in to Red Alert 3 on the map, Industrial Strength. This is for the win, 72 Turbo Tournament number one. In the top right hand corner as the Purple Soviets, this is DDF. In the bottom left hand corner as the Yellow Allies, this is Vindy's. All right, Turbo Tournament number one, while we watch these bears and these dogs engage each other in the north side of the map, what does that mean? Well, basically, there are two for the Win72 tournaments. They're both single elimination tournaments. But instead of doing, like, best of three rounds, up to best of five semis, up to best of seven finals, it's best of one rounds, up to best of three semis, up to best of five finals. So this is a semi-final from Turbo number one. We are not going to be taking a look at both the semis and the finals from both tournaments. We're going to be looking at a selection of a series that Rage of Heat, the Grandmaster himself, has uh, has recommended to me. We'll put it that way. We had a little chat uh, a little while ago, and we said, like, all right, what? tell me, what are the tournaments? What are the best series that I should be checking out? What should I be casting? And on top of that, I am going to be taking a look at some of the other best of ones that were played. See if there are any interesting looking matchups. See if there are any, any inter interesting looking games. And if so, then we'll do a little combo series or a little combo match video like we did before with uh, the other For the Win games where there were some interesting matches. Some, uh, some series that we didn't normally get to see. And look at that. DDF going to be locking down that Prospector. Gets inside despite all of the walls that Vindy's built. One Sickle going to be trying to get the drop on those Peacekeepers, and these Bears going to be able to shut down that one Peacekeeper. No problemo there. Denying this income is so great for DDF. Look at this behind this. He's got his War Factory. He's got extra refineries, extra reactors coming up. Extra refineries, meaning just his two normal ones. Airfield does come up, but strapped for cash on half the income that he normally would be is Vindy's. Finally, he manages to break that terror drone with the Peacekeeper. But look, he's got Sickles inside of his base. An incredible execution here from DDF. A total manhandling of Vindy's in this game, number one. Now, Vindy's is not down and out yet. Well, now that he's got his economy back online, he can potentially claw his way back into this game with extreme efficiency. We are going to be looking for some very defensive, maybe even turtle-esque type play from Vindy's, and he is going to need to be very efficient with every single unit. This is really a case, I mean, Red Alert 3 is already a little bit more micro-heavy than some of the other games, and every unit matters more than some of the other games, but in this case, for Vindy's, it is true more than most. Now, we've already got two Bullfrogs out here on the field, and two Bullfrogs against one Vindicator is not a situation that you normally want to find yourself in. As allies, you want to be matching Bullfrogs for Vindicators. You want at least those two Vindicators when you've got two Bullfrogs out on the field. Of course, with the airfield out, MCV infected by a terror drone is not that going to be that big of a deal. If he does manage to get the infection, he should be able to get the repairs without too much trouble. But it is going to force Vindy's to go all the way back with his MCV. So whatever plan he had, whatever aggression, whatever opportunity he was hoping to create is going to be completely shut down. Nice jump of the sickle splitting them off one by one. Now, of course, we can see that the Vindicators, three of them, don't quite kill two Bullfrogs. They get very close to killing two Bullfrogs, but the second Bullfrog does survive, which is why you need that extra Vindicator. And again, buying so much time as DDF, what a great opening for him. Everything going his way. And I mean, again, Vindy's, can he absolutely claw his way back in this game? Yes, and that's what we're going to be looking for, but... I do want to highlight just like what an incredible opening DDF is having in this game. He is just absolutely powerhousing this match. Four Vindicators going to be coming out, but they're up against four Bullfrogs, so they're not going to be escaping without some kind of losses. One, two Vindicators do go down, and I believe that was trading it out against two Bullfrogs. Yeah, and even a one Bullfrog does manage to survive, so... You can go ahead and do the math on that one, even with killing the oil derrick there. Two bullfrogs for two vindicators. A Soviet player is going to be feeling good about that any of every day of the week. Third refinery up and running for each player, so equalizing on the economy front, but killing that oil derrick gives a slight advantage to Vindy's over time. But of course, are we going to be able to see him actually utilize that theoretical 
uh, economic advantage that he has currently got. Airfield, note, Naval Yard are going to be popping up down there. When I saw those Vindicators heading off, I was wondering if maybe he had rebuilt his airfield somewhere else. Sickle's going to be jumping every which way, and of course, if you try and sell off the walls to allow the uh, to allow the prospect to escape, well, you got a terror drone there as well as Sickle's on the outside of the wall. So these prospectors slowly, slowly going to get themselves torn to pieces, and once again, we're going to be at a low economic game for Vindy's. Now, he does still have a couple of prospectors harvesting, but just barely. He has not restarted either one of them. This guy going to be brought off the line, but he will be surviving for now, so he will be able to get back to work eventually. And again, Vindy's, he's got economy, he's got refineries, but the working harvester numbers are just not there at all. Narrowly avoids getting the kill on that prospector with that sickle, just barely gets saved by the multi-gunner turret. Vindy's hanging on by absolute scraps right here, right now, as a fourth refinery, the super reactor, airfield, all going up out here on the water for DDF. What an opening, what a first couple of minutes for DDF. Maybe you could describe some of his uh, some of his harassment here as a little bit sloppy, you know, losing a couple of extra sickles, but killing the majority of the Vindicators, I think, more than makes up for that, even if it maybe wasn't the most perfect execution. I think it was still solid execution by DDF. All right, Vindy's, what is his plan from here? He's got Riptides. He's got a couple of them out. He's got his Tier 2 up and running, which means we have Assault Destroyers, but the airfield is too far away, which means no Cryocopters, and he's going to have to deal with this Hammer Tank right here. One of the goals for DDF in this map, in this series, is shut down the airfield. Maybe that means killing all of the Vindicators with Bullfrogs, but maybe it just means killing the structure. Either way, he wants to shut down that airfield because that is a tool that the Allies use to try and get themselves back in this game. And right now, a single Riptide out on the water, which is going to get shut down by this Twin Blade, is about the best hope that Vindy's has. There's the GG gets called. DDF with an extremely strong game number one in this series, showing some serious power of Soviets. And again, Vindy's. A great player in so many other situations, but in this case, maybe he's a little bit rusty, maybe there was something else going on, maybe it's a bad time zone, who knows, but you cannot take away from DDF that that was a masterful Soviet performance there on Industrial Strike. So we'll have to find out what happens in game number two of this best of three series, DDF on the verge of victory of advancing into those finals, but Vindy's... Does he have what it takes to claw it back? Let's find out in game number two. Which takes us to Snowplow. Here we got these lovely little houses which make up the middle of the map in the north as the purple Soviets with a domination in game number one. This is DDF. Deep Dark Fantasy, a.k.a. Libra, down in the south as the yellow allies. This is Vindy's. Vindy's a powerful micro-allied player in so, so, so many situations, but not so much that last one. You do have to give him credit for being able to pull out as much of a, uh, as much of a chance as he could from that previous game. Fast airfield from allies. Normally, this is an engineer hunting sort of ploy, but of course, we've got three flak troopers hanging out next to this already completed flak cannon, which means it's going to be slim pickings for this allied Vindicator. Vindy's knows that. He's heading back home. We got now five... Five Flak Troopers. It might actually... No, it's, gonna, it's not going to be super fast War Factory. It's actually going to be War Factory after second reactor. So uh, he's going for a little bit slower of a power-up pace. But of course, he's going to be feeling good considering how this opening went. He's not going to be losing any Engineers to, that, uh, to those Vindicators. Which normally can be a very nice feeling for the allied player. But in this case, oh, it's actually going to be second reactor and then MCV pack up and move over to the third refinery location. So DDF, he's not looking to go bullfrogs big in the first moment. Instead, he's just going to hang out and he is going to deal with the Vindicators through other means. Looks like a couple of conscripts got bombed out of existence there. Vindy's looking for every advantage, every bit of damage that he can possibly get. DDF going to be making sure that there's no quick third refinery coming up from Vindy's as that Vindicator clears out the bear just to allow that possibility. Third refinery up and running for DDF, but it's going to be Naval Yard in the south 
for Vindies. Now, of course, we do most likely have a couple of Javelin Troopers going to be popping on out, and I assume a couple of Riptides as well. Nice bomb splitting there from Vindies, able to clean up all of those. Hmm, replaces his Super Reactor a little bit further away from the front line but also close to this ledge, which in the past we've seen super reactors go down to javelin troopers up on that ledge, so we'll have to see if this riptide is able to do anything. No javelin troopers out here on the front lines for Vindes. Oh, he's packing up some engineers, so he's going to go for the cap of one of those oil derricks, and he's going to go for a pretty safe cap at that. Once again, Vindes, he's keeping an eye out on everything with those Vindicators. Oh my gosh, this is so many flag troopers, which, you know, Black Troopers, not cheap. That's a lot of money spent just on Black Troopers. Nice adaptive armor reaction there by DDF, able to save most of the health on his harvester, keep it harvesting at sort of optimal capacity there, optimal rate of income. Okay, is this the Riptide with the Engineer? You'll notice the uh, Engineer did not pop on out for that oil derrick, which means he's going to be trying to shut down whatever production is... Nope. He's not doing any of that. He's, uh, I guess it was an airfield building. I don't know what was going on with DDF, but, uh, okay. So pretty cool fake out there. You got to hand it to Vindy's with the very cool fake out. I guess he realized he wasn't going to get that MCV cap, and especially with the walls coming down there, you know that DDF is paying attention. MIG now out on the field. What a weirdly passive opening, considering it was fast airfield, considering it's snowplow. What an oddly passive opening for these two guys to uh, to have take part in. So Riptide and Engineer, I guess, was sent over there, which means I don't know what that other Riptide was doing. I guess he was looking for something. But at any rate, uh, MIG's going to be taking down one Vindicator. Nicely done for DDF. Will maybe get a second Vindicator. It's going to be close. He does nab that second one, and the third one will land safely. No Apollos out on the field just yet. One Apollo here, but there's already two MIGs, so you got to hand it to the MIGs. They have the opportunity to uh, just simply overwhelm the Apollos. Vindy's positioned in his MCV in a place that he can still get his Tier 2 upgrades to his production facilities, but also that he can turret push the middle of the map. Three MIGs, I mean... If, if you keep the one Vindicator and you go three Apollos, you can maybe find a favorable engagement there, but it's definitely not a guarantee, and it's definitely not a, uh, a surefire thing, especially if there eventually is a fourth MiG or even a second, uh, second airfield. Again, you might be able to find a favorable engagement. This one, it's four MiGs versus three Apollos. Nice control there by Vindy's. Splits off two of the MiGs, and of course he's going to be able to return to base more quickly than his opponent. So he gets three MiGs for the price of nothing. Perfect control there by, by Vindy's. you got to make sure that you get the, uh, the correct timing of that return to base, because of course you do have the speed advantage of the return to base, but, uh, you know... That doesn't mean that you're going to get it right every single time. It's just kind of like bomb splitting. In theory, it's an easy thing to do, but the ability to do it accurately 99 times out of 100 is what separates the good from the great. Tesla Coil and 4th Refinery going to be going down way out on the water, and killing this Riptide is a nice little safety move there for Vindy's. Now, this is the kind of efficiency, efficiency that we need to see. Nice pullback of the one MiG from DDF. He's going to be bringing those Apollos into a little bit of a trap, and guess what? Oh, uh, leaving the cryocopter. I was going to say, guess what? When you trade out three Apollos and a cryocopter, it doesn't matter if you got the harvester kill. It's basically not worth it. I mean, maybe over time, if he forgot to rebuild that harvester or something, then the lost income would make up for it, but just, uh, just money in the bank. Three Apollos and a cryocopter, not what the, worth the same price as, uh, as one collector there. Now out on the water, we've got that expansion up and running, but the War Factory finally here, the last production facility to actually be added on, which is kind of funny to see against a uh, against an airfield first allies. Killing the Engineer, always nice for Vindy's. A nice catch there with the Twin Blade as well. Vindy's really solidifying his opening here and uh, actually rebuilding his naval yard, selling it off from down there and taking a fourth refinery over there. 
Just got this guy left to uh, get him up to that five refinery economy. So Vindy's, we're going to be looking for that tier three power up. He's going to be going tier three relatively soon. I would assume. I would assume he's had the tier two for a while, and uh, getting up to that artillery is going to be the next step, I think, for him. He's done a good job holding off DDF and making sure that DDF can't really do anything, considering the big ground unit swell that DDF has had, but. What a great, just slow build kind of game. Very aggressive Conyard placement. Holy cow, this is going to be forcing reactions from... Well, he's also dropping a Naval Yard here, but this is going to be forcing a reaction from Vindy's. There's no way that you let a Tesla coil go down right here next to your airfield, next to your refinery, and uh, not do anything about that. But it's going to take some serious firepower diversion, which could open up op opportunities for DDF. All right, Assault Destroyer here on the front lines, and... Uh, Vindy's, he's still keeping that Tier 2 up, so he hasn't gone Tier 3 just yet. Tesla Coil is going to be finished in a couple of seconds, but the Multigunner Turret got down first, so it's going to be able to get some nice DPS out, and that, with the Vindicator, will solidify the kill. Apollo's showing, or MiG's rather, showing up for the kill on that Cryocopter, but they won't quite get it. Terror Drone here to lock down that Assault Destroyer, so no value gained for Vindy's, although he will get a couple of kills on those Black Troopers with the Apollos raining down from the sky, but that is not the way that you want to get the kills. We got another Tesla coil. Yeah, another Tesla coil going to be going down. A reactor gets broken by that multi-gunner turret, and these leech beams are eventually going to break down that Riptide. Now, we do have a Kula subs out here, which is going to help deal with that multi-gunner turret. Another cryocopter goes down. Those things are not cheap for Vindy's. He needs to keep them alive because that is how he's going to delay this attack or at least hold it off until he can get a bit of a better defense here because you got to keep in mind there isn't much defensively here for Vindy's. Once again, dropping the reactor just to block off this multi-gunner turret. The, Apo the Akula sub rather did go down and that is a nice move for Vindy's. Uh, I mean, you can shoot these hammer tanks all you want, but with their leech beam, you're not going to get very far. The Tesla coil is up and running. A second Tesla coil being added on could make this position even more powerful. Dropping those multi-gunner turrets is nice in theory, but it's really just a delaying tactic from this kind of a position for Vindy's. Oh, all right, good power move here. Doubling up on the cryo to take care of that Tesla coil quickly, but can he actually get the kill? Can he get the damage out on it? No, because the cryocopter ended up going down. So now the Tesla coil is here. Another assault destroyer is in the ground, completely destroyed there by DDF, and Vindy's can't gain any ground. DDF is also having a hard time moving, hard time actually moving forward. But I honestly feel a little bit better from DDF's position. If he doesn't make big, big gains right now, that is okay because he's going to be taking out a refinery. The MCV hasn't been able to make any real progress. And uh, we're still sitting at just tier two, which means no opportunity to get out of Athena cannons, no opportunity to get out aircraft carriers to be able to assault DDF from afar. It's just going to be DDF's game. All right, refinery down, airfield under threat. DDF is feeling good. He doesn't have to force an engagement, and that is maybe the best thing about his situation is he can continue to bleed out Vindy's. As long as he doesn't get cocky, forcing the sell-off is so difficult for Vindy's. He's rebuilt it. He's going to rebuild it somewhere. Oh, man, he doesn't have it just yet, which, again, it just weakens his front line. It makes this defense that much harder, and the hammer tank numbers, they've simply been growing. Yeah, you can try and even things up with the Assault Destroyers, but Vindy has been unable to do that at the current moment. He's got no real tools to deal with this number of hammer tanks, the terror drones, the flak troopers. You put it all together, and it is an extremely strong force. Yeah, one terror drone down, but I assume DDF is going to have another one on the way soon enough. No, it's just more hammer tanks for now, so DDF has to be careful with the engagement. He can't get, like, an easy, an easy engage being forced by those terror drones. Apollo's taking a little bit of damage as they try and chase after those MiGs. Hammer tanks pull back, and for now, the uh, the front line has kind of abated. DDF doesn't want to just suicide all of his forces into this into this engagement here. Again, slowly, slowly bleeding down this multi-gunner turret is the way to go. And it's a good move. Constantly sacrificing out those base defenses to buy more and more time. The crowd shot could be the big thing that Vindy's is looking for here. There's the Riptide, which was supposed to be the one thing getting the kill on all of these frozen units. But the Peacekeepers are going to have to do it themselves. This is a forced engagement here. Riptide does go down, but a lot of infantry here going to be getting zapped a little bit by that Tesla coil. The flak, true, the flak cannon trying to deal with the, the cryocopters in the sky. The conscripts not doing much. 
but the hammer tanks are what's really going for the crush. The bears not even able to do all that much, but again, the hammer tanks lifting the burden in this engagement. Terror drone locks down the MCV, and this assault destroyer is coming for the saving grace. The MCV will get a crush on a hammer tank, but the front line has been broken. DDF can once again play the game his way, waiting and watching. He doesn't have to kill Vindy's right now, and of course, Vindy's becomes weaker by the moment. Every engagement has been successful for DDF. And he's just going to keep pushing on forward. There's another shrink down. Assault Destroyer normally would be crushing these hammer tanks every single which way to Sunday. But instead, <laughs> he's just completely useless. GG is called. Vindy's has been defeated. And DDF will take a 2-0 victory over Vindy's heading into the finals of Turbo number 1. That will do it for this series. A great showing by DDF and Vindy's falling down just a little bit there, which makes me definitely sad because I love me watching some Vindy's play. He's such a fun player to watch. And uh, this was just not his day, which considering all of the times he's crushed many, many players in the past, it's okay for him to lose one every now and again. That will do it for this series, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cybert signing out.